Mikhail Sergachev, number 98 for Tampa Bay Lightning. Mikhail, one of my great memories of you, uh, whenever I hear your name, I think back to the Windsor Spitfires of the OHL and the Memorial Cup, but I don't necessarily think of hockey. I think of some of the most intense table tennis games I ever saw <laughs> between you and Rocky Thompson. <laughs> Can anyone beat you on the Tampa Bay Lightning in table tennis? Well, Cooch was able to couple times we would mm -hmm. play like 10 games he would beat me like two or three times yeah maybe actually you beat me more i don't want to lie <laughs> but, <laughs> but but it was still <laughs> seven to two like eight seven but to three, i'm better eight to i'm better yeah. yeah yeah i think i'm better um we actually were battling with brendan lemieux oh yeah yeah like hard rocky rocky's okay like rocky's, you know, and rocky's intense he's intense at everything yeah yes we were doing uh, push-ups with him a lot like he's... like like push-ups until you drop so you do one one two two like the whole the whole team does that and mm -hmm. then you go up to like seven or ten and then you go down and see how many guys can you know actually last so it was me and rocky at the end so yeah. you did all the way up to ten and all the way down i i, I don't want to lie i think it was like up to seven or ten and uh, yeah and no, then, you can lie. It's it's okay. No, it's I don't want to lie. Because <laughs> <laughs> Rocky's not going to respect me if I lie. <laughs> but so you were the only one who could keep up with him, right? Yeah, it was me and me and him a couple times for sure. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah. It, it was it was actually fun because the whole team was doing it, and the guys were like competitive. Yeah, and we did a lot of uh, skates with him, like because we would play Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then uh, Monday, Tuesday would be like two days kind of yep. off. So, but we will skate on Tuesday and do a really hard back skate mm -hmm. and see who could last too. So it was like that competitive all the time. So are you, so when the lightning get together, the main group and they do their fitness tests, are you going to be the we best score? No, no, we do like, we don't do push ups. We do uh, bench press really narrow. Mm -hmm. It's weird. I don't know. Like, <laughs> so, you, so basically you think the Tampa... <laughs> Bench press is useless, is what you're talking no, about. I'm not saying it's useless. Maybe it's good for boxing out or something. I don't know. <laughs> and like, what it, it doesn't show how good of a player you are. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, I would much rather do tests on the ice. Mm -hmm. Please cut that out. <laughs> I don't want to do this. <laughs> so hard, so hard. Uh, but you know, the it just shows the fitness level you have off the ice. But yeah. it not necessarily translates to on the ice stuff. But who, who do you work out with in the uh, in, in the off season? Like, who do you train with? I have, I have my Russian trainer, but now last two years I've been training with our uh, Mark. Mm -hmm. His name is Mark. So, mm -hmm. yeah, he's he's great. He's our strength conditioning coach in Tampa. So do you, is there like the one thing I know about the Lightning is you don't you're not as good as you guys have been the last few years, though, being an intensely competitive team. So in the room, what do you guys compete against each other at? And who are the most ridiculously competitive people hmm. and biggest sore losers? They compete at the football, uh, fantasy football. Fantasy football? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't. So I don't know. Like okay. I, I hear them yelling all the time, you know, talking about <laughs> like drafts and trades and all stuff like that. Golf too, when there's a big golf tournament, everybody's yeah. talking about. I'm not really into that. Mm -hmm. So... Biggest sore loser, <laughs> Hetty. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't know. No, there, there, there's nobody like that. You know, uh, mostly it's our uh, like a doctor, Mikey. He mm -hmm. he, he he likes it, so yeah. they all like it. I, I'm just not into that. So so, what do you compete with the other guys in? Hockey. Okay. Yeah, that's 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 the best because we go and practice, and it's in very intense practices. If we do like uh, battles in the corner. Everybody's trying to beat each other, so everybody's going at it with each other. Do the coaches ever have to tell you guys to calm down? I don't remember. Like we had a couple, uh, you know, hard moments when you like go at it and you like slash each other after and stuff like that. But it was when I was younger, but not anymore. Kind of, I kind of took it down a little bit. <laughs> but uh, and me, me and Kilorn, I think last year went at it. Oh yeah, he, he was really pissed off. Like I, I dangled him on a blue line three times <laughs> or five <laughs> and uh he like slashed me and hit me really hard like i was like dude relax and we kind of got uh, into it so but after that you know it's all good yeah you go in the locker room and the boys are sitting and chirping all like both of you mm -hmm. for doing that so it's it's great so what's to see because we always talk about tampa and we always make the point it's 
it's the fool that counts out the Tampa Bay Lightning. What is it about this team that is so resilient that gets us to a place where we say it's a foolish person that counts out Tampa? Well, it's our leadership leadership group. You know, you uh, you watch they they went to the final in fourteen or fifteen against against two thousand fifteen. Yeah, against a really good uh, Chicago team, and they they were, you know, a couple moments changed the the way of the series, and they lost. But still, they got that you know in their head that they lost, and they went to the finals. They know what it takes to get there. So when I got to the team. Right away, we went to uh, semifinals against Washington, lost mm-hmm. in seven games. You know, it's just like you come to the team as a young guy and you see the culture that they established in Tampa, a winning culture and uh, a r- and really good environment of respect and love for each other. Mm. And uh, so anybody comes to the team, they blend in right away. So our, our GM likes to say, like, we don't have assholes here. So because we don't. And it's they're doing their job to you know yeah. make sure that they bring right people in and that blend in and play well and uh that's what's been the most fun you know the guys so. do you, do you like rugby rugby yes no it's too too violent man it's <laughs> 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 crazy <laughs> well because the reason i ask is there's a book about the all blacks the legendary rugby team and uh, one of the chapters is, and they talk about their success. And one of the chapters is called "No Dickheads," and that's exactly what I yeah. thought of when you were saying that. Like, yeah. No dickheads. Like we, I don't, I don't remember one, not like bad person, but you know, one person that or one player that would be like, you know, going against somebody or like doing something. We always had a great group of guys, and you know, Vic and uh, Stammer kind of established that like with Callahan was there mm-hmm. they kind of established that culture of you know like respect everybody humility respect the fans like stuff like that you see them every day what they do for fans for the community and you respect that and you want to do the same thing so that's that's what I appreciate the most um that I mean I, I love listening to that um I asked so someone asked me which lightning player was coming down here and I mentioned your name and they said, ask him, because he says to me, he heard from a Lightning player, they are all pissed off coming into this year because they felt they should have beaten Toronto and they should have been playing longer. Is that true? Yeah, I mean, obviously in my head, we should have won the Cup. So every year we, we should win the Cup in my head. But uh, yeah, obviously we're pissed off. We don't want to lose. We don't want to be the team that, you know, Toronto finally got to the second round and they beat Tampa Bay Lightning. Like... They didn't go through, obviously, the second round. So, but you know, we didn't want to be that and uh, lose to them. So, uh, yeah, this year we'll see. We'll see when uh, the camp starts. How pissed off we are. Hmm. Looks, judging from that little smile, it's it's pretty pissed off. Yeah, the, the guys are very competitive even now. Usually before camp, we skate, we play like some, we do like five drills, and then we uh, play a game. And usually it was just like a beer, beer league hockey, and now it's like intense. Hmm. Some hitting too, like from from young guys too. So it was like, oh yeah, it's great, competitive. Yeah, like nobody's gonna let me walk them on the blue line. It's just not acceptable for them anymore. Not like <laughs> Alex Kalorn did. <laughs> not a, no, he, he, he let me walk him, and then he hit me. Uh, like, jeez, <laughs> figure it out. Um, John Cooper. Uh, relationships that players have with coaches can be up and down. Sometimes the coach is a good guy, sometimes not a good guy. And that's just the way a season goes and, and, and the way a team goes. What is, by and large, the relationship between Tampa Bay Lightning, the players, and that head coach? I mean, he's the longest serving coach in the NHL. He's doing something right. He's won Stanley Cups. What's the relationship like? Well, he's very good. I think that's psychology. I think he was studying psychology in school or something because he yeah. sees the problems right away, sees what's going on with the team, talks to players. You know, he's not making decisions just just like, you know, out of uh, being pissed off or something like that. He's just like talking to players, great communicator. So, and he's evolving in the game of hockey too. He's mm-hmm. not just, you know, he's been in the... Uh, 
our coach for what 10 years or whatever and he's just sitting there like being you know having fun about that no he's evolving he wants to win and mm. we get that energy from him every every camp so there's no sitting around there's like go 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 what's maybe like the biggest change you've seen him make in the last couple of years from evolving from evolving, like uh i think our neutral zone mm -hmm. changed a little bit and and the breakouts mm -hmm. yeah we've been uh We've been doing some uh, new breakouts. Some you, you're gonna you're gonna I'm gonna make me work to figure this out, or uh... nope. Nope. <laughs> no, I'm just not gonna tell you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I think we got some new changes coming uh, this year. Hmm. I'm not gonna say where, but I think we got changes. You guys will figure out easy when we play. So that's interesting. Yeah, There's I can't some, really tell because I don't know. Homework. I don't know if I can or cannot. Like, so I'll just say we we, we got some changes coming. Nobody listens to this podcast, so you can say <laughs> yeah, right. You ahead. can say whatever. Yeah. No, no, no. Everybody <laughs> listens to it. I see it every everywhere. So there's like little rules. Like yeah, I can't remember. someone was explaining to me once something about you know protecting lead in the third, no D to D passes, like no, tiny little rules like that. That's not true. No, you see a you see a play, you make it, you know. But obviously, when you're up three two in the third period, some plays you don't make, like uh, passing, th like. Breaking out through the middle, that yeah. would be a little risky. So we just kind of keep it on the yellow sometimes, and uh, mm. or off the glass and out. So that's actually that's the best play in the third period, off the glass. The eight, that's called the eighties breakout. Yeah, <laughs> high off the glass and out. Yeah, they, they but everybody it, did. They, they call it off the window. And just, <laughs> yeah, Luke Shen calls it that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you about Andre Vasilevsky. I mm -hmm. mean, listen, this is we're in the era right now of the the rise of the great Russian netminder and Andre Vasilevsky. Everybody defers to. Um, what's it like playing in front of him every single night? Well, I can turn the puck over as the last guy. <laughs> you know, I worry about <laughs> getting scored on. So, no, uh, it's just uh, you know, sometimes you don't box out. Sometimes you lose the puck. Sometimes you know stuff happens that you don't want to happen and you know that he's there and yeah. he's gonna make the save 95 percent of the time so and uh that just gives you confidence to make plays like to all of, all of our d not just me everybody's making plays everybody's skating because they know he's gonna do his job to save you know the goal so and uh it's just the consistency of him he's been the best goalie in the league since i came in the league mm -hmm. six six or seven years so and he's I think he's going to get only better, especially now after uh, two months off. I think we're going to see a lot of good things from him. And uh, just like I've never seen a guy work as hard as him hmm. on our team. Like stuff he's doing is incredible. Yeah. So that's why I have no worries about him anytime because he's he's there. He's in a gym. He's on the ice. Mm -hmm. he, he wants guys to shoot on him. He wants and he's battling in practice, too. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to give up goals. Mm. Doesn't want to be like sometimes we play a small game. He doesn't want to be that goalie that loses. So, mm. so he's he's great. I think he's one of the best athletes that ever played a sport. Mm. Like you watch him go on a split mm -hmm. and then put his leg up from there from a split. Like I've never seen anybody do that or from a split push mm. and make a save. That extra like I don't know five ten inches he gives himself. It's just like from a stretch, he's really strong. Yeah. So and and the feel for the game too. He's like, you know, sometimes we like you dangle on the blue line, you like do something like that. He's doing the same in the in the net, like with his gloves and like yeah, making yeah, yeah. crazy saves and like behind the back, like that. The 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 glove save behind the back is always the one that yeah. freaks me out. It's like, like what did you think like the first time you saw that? I remember my what what did I just see? Would that be like uh, the same as Michigan, but for goalies? Wow. That's a great question. Uh, you know what? Maybe Kiprasov with the Scorpion save might have been like that. Because I think the first mm. time I saw Scorpion save. Yeah, but still had, think I, about it. Similar... Like putting your arm around your he, I, I but think... you know what? Now everybody does that now. And I, it, it's, it's, it's total Vasilevsky. It's, it's total Vasilevsky. Now everybody try. It's like, mm. it's, it's a hope play, right? It, it is. But I think, I think he could have played with the blocker. <laughs> But I think he over over skated and turned, yeah. So it kind of made him like go with his glove. Ah. So that's why it's not. It wasn't like he was he was trying to be cool. Mm -hmm. He was out of desperation. Yeah. Made that save. I don't know. I think it looks pretty cool. Yeah, but so. I think it's kind of like Michigan. Like, I like I like the way you think. Yeah, the the way you know that impacted the game. 
Well, so, the creativity of it too, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. He's very creative in the net, how to make saves. Last one for me, you know, one of the things with the Lightning is you've had to let a lot of good players go, just mm-hmm. the way the salary cap works. Just wondering of all the great players who've left Tampa, who was the guy, just maybe even personally, who was the hardest for you to see leave? Hmm. Mac. McDonough. McDonough, eh? Yeah, because we... Uh, we we're really good friends, and uh, when he actually got traded to Tampa, I was kind of not upset. I was upset. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I was upset because uh, he took the second deep air spot, and he kept it for as long as he's been there. Then it kind of started changing because I was playing with him or with Hetty, and you know they gave me a, a bigger role. But then I realized he's such a great player, such a good deep presence that I, I have to learn from him. And he's such a great guy too. Like everybody loves him. Like mm-hmm. the funniest story was, so he never talks to the refs, never like says anything to them bad. Like, oh, you made a mistake here. He's not. He's not Victor. Victor like yells at the refs. <laughs> so he uh, one time uh, a linesman was messing up, did like five uh, missed calls or whatever, and <laughs> so linesman is staying by our bench. Matt gets up. He's like. This is the worst performance I've seen from a linesman in a long time. He sits down. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Liney was like, oh, I'm sorry, Mac. Like, I, just a tough day for me. <laughs> I was laughing so hard. I'm like, oh, my God. It's the first time I've seen him say something to ref. <laughs> How are you with officials? Oh, I was tough. Like, oh, I was crazy my first couple of years. Like, yeah. I had a really tough moment my first year in Chicago. Uh, I think Hartman kind of slashed me. I gave him a cross check and I kind of got him in the face. So a ref gave me a two minutes for that. I go in the, in the box and I'm really pissed off. So I throw a towel at the glass and it gives me two plus two. So it gives me four minutes. That's more, no. That's more specific, yeah. And I'm more pissed off. I'm like breaking my stick there and stuff. I go to the bench and guys are like, no, I actually go to the locker room after that. And guys are giving me shit, like yelling yeah. at me like, Cali, our coaches, yeah. Stammer, everybody. And I'm 19 years old and like I almost cried. I felt so bad. <laughs> like I let, you know, let my team down, obviously. But in the third period, coach decided to play me 10 minutes or like nine minutes. And I felt like, wow, okay, so trusting me. Yeah. And then they uh, scratched me for two games after that. <laughs> <laughs> Back skated me hard. Yeah. And uh, then I talked to our ref and I apologized to him, you know, and, um, but that didn't change me. Like for two years, I was an, kind of an asshole to refs, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, yelling at them sometimes. But now I kind of figure it out. Like, just be nice to them. Like, talk to them, say hi. Like, and you know, and if you don't like the call, they already made it. You go to the box and sit down. Yeah. And shut up. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it's interesting. We kill yeah. them with kindness. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Sidney Crosby talks about that. Remember, we asked him a couple yep. of years ago if you could change anything about your career. What would you change? And he said, "How I treated officials when I was when I started in the NHL." He said I was awful. Well, he, he was getting he, killed. Oh yeah, oh for uh, sure. High hits, like I would be upset too. And sometimes they would miss it, but still, yeah, like they missed yeah. the call. They can't really do anything about mm-hmm. it. But you have to let them know too. Like now, what I do is like, if I miss a call, I come up to him like, dude, like I'm, I'm you know, like I got see, like I'm bleeding. So <laughs> <laughs> please, like look, next time, look uh, yeah next time look for that so yeah. that's what i do kind of well, this has been great uh excellent. a lot of fun um best of luck this season Thank on you. the the new look the new variations of how the tampa bay lightning are going to play you've given us all homework now so. <laughs> thank you yeah. so much for this. thank you so much thank you guys